Okay, Sissy, I'll hand you cranberry. Can you carry her nicely? Better? Good job, baby. Pumpkin is one of our Nigerian dwarfs. They're for buttermilk. But my daughter actually has claimed all of them as hers. There you go, sweetheart. Oh, let's head for the door, Seth. Come on, Mama. Today we brought Pumpkin in to have her left front leg looked at. She's been limping on it for quite a while. OK, come on, Sissy. I thought maybe it was just some pregnancy strain, but uh, she had her baby almost two weeks ago, and the limp was still there. Yes. My goodness, you got a big goat that hit. I thought it was a 200 pound goat, and you picking this little thing up. It's always nice to work with kids when they have uh, kids that want to go someplace with the kids. <laughs> well, her mom is actually the one with the leg problem. Oh, her mom's this... right here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she just carried the baby. <laughs> Brought Pumpkin's daughter cranberry sauce with her. She's not quite two weeks old. Can you tell her what your baby goat's name is? Cranberry. Mama is pumpkin pie. <laughs> she was due on Black Friday, so we named her cranberry so, sauce. Walker. Come here, sweetheart. Come on. The goat is very tender on the front legs. OK, that's the shoulder. It's right in here. And the shoulder is thick. Here, if you feel this here, how swollen is thick in that house compared to this one? Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely feel that. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's just arthritis in the shoulder. She'll be fine. And what should do? Give her an aspirin twice a day. That'll help for pain. OK. Sometimes it gets better later on. But if, in, in this case, it's painful, the best way, an aspirin twice a day. You're spoiled. Yeah, I know. So is this one. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Doc was great. Come on, sweetheart. He loved my kids screaming at him and getting all excited about him. And he did perfect with the goat. That was a quick and easy trip, wasn't it, sis? Your baby's fine, mama. She should be great. Ready? <laughs> the holidays are just around the corner. And at Full Vet, it's time to deck the halls with dogs. Both Ellie Mae. Thank you for the kisses. That's enough. And Mojo. Uh oh. I got lunch for him. Are ready for the mistletoe. It's okay, sweetie. Oh, yes. Mojo's a little five month old dachshund. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Hi Mojo. Got a little sassy to him. How are you doing, Frankie? He's baby? got a tooth. Oh, wiggle butt. <laughs> of course he's going to be. Mojo's adult teeth came in, and one baby tooth didn't come out. I'm too chicken to take it out myself. <laughs> On the bottom, okay, right there. Oh, yeah. I think if you just ping it. It is looking like it's going to come out. The rest of Mojo's mouth looks great. The other baby teeth have fallen out on their own. So even when you kind of like moved his lip, it did kind of start yeah. going like that. So I think it just needs a little tug. So it's just the one that kind of stuck around a little bit longer. So I'm going to take him on back and pop out that little tooth, OK? Can I have it? Yeah, yeah. I'll put it in a baggie <laughs> for you. <laughs> just stick your finger in there. He won't bite it. Ellie Mae. She's a silver lamb. She's special. Ellie Mae is unique. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, sweet girl. In more than one way. All right, so this is Ellie. So what has been going on? So she went in the heat in September, but her very last set of teats was two other smokes quit licking. Dana and Rhonda noticed that she has a lump they haven't noticed before. We call them supernumerary nipples. They're like extra nipples, probably just so small you didn't notice them before, but now that she's gone through a heat, uh, they've gotten a little bit bigger. The number of nipples that you're born with is dictated by your genes. There's no discharge or abnormal swelling. It's just some extra friends. The fate's aligned for Ellie here, and she has one more nipple than the rest of us. But it's not anything to be too concerned about. OK. All right, good to go. And he's very wiggly. So it's on this side. When I open Mojo's mouth, I can easily see which tooth is just hanging there. No, look at that little tooth. It's pretty wiggly, and all I need to do is apply some slight pressure, and it'll pop off. There it is, bud. 
Good boy. Tooth fairy tonight. Good boy. There's no treatment for Mojo. Tiniest puppy tooth. The tooth is gone, and there's nothing else to worry about. Here's the big tooth. I'm very happy Dr. Nicole did a wonderful job with Mojo. Look at there. He didn't even cry when I took it out. <laughs> Don't what? even think he noticed. Got the tooth out, and I had her put it in a bag so I could have a little keepsake. You never know. It's the good news, huh? I don't know about the snow. I found a box of light. December at the clinic can mean only one thing. Is that his tail? It's time to get out the holiday llamas. He's flashy enough without his lights. We decided to make it look festive in here. So we're getting ready for Christmas. Everybody. And then, oh, maybe, hmm. <laughs> Not sure about this. I feel like these should be, don't make no sense. I think, sure. He's a little Charlie Brown one. OK, all right. Well, I'm tired of this already. You're doing good work over ho, there. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Lisa helped us get in the Christmas spirit also. I found our tree topper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the top hat is new and exciting. <laughs> Making it festive in here. Good luck. <laughs> we need it. When you're done with this one, then come and help me. <laughs> While Prancer and Dancer may be getting ready for liftoff, Come here, buddy. at rooftop landing, Sven is currently grounded. Sven had a hurt foot. Started on Sunday. Didn't seem to get a whole lot better yesterday. Didn't improve at all. Hello, hello. Hello. This is very important time of year. Oh, a big one? Yeah, he's full size, yep. We have thousands of people come here at the farm every week. So we want every animal tip-top shape. Let him walk. Yeah. They have a reindeer that has a sore foot. There's nothing in here. I couldn't find anything. No. I turned it up a couple days ago. You did. Okay. Now look at the knife. I want to see that. Still, it looks like it's a hoof. I don't know if he stepped on something but there is a very sore spot at the hoof. To find the source of Sven's pain, Dr. Pohl needs to trim his hoof. I know, that one, that's the one that hurts. Hold still, sweetheart. The plan is sound. Hold still. Oh, come on. Easy. Though the 300-pound reindeer might not agree. Oh, now you fight. Okay, let me just give him a shot to quiet him down a little bit. Rather than get him kicked in my face, we sedated a little bit. Good, let's give him a couple of minutes. Not enough to make it lay down, but just enough to take the edge off and we can work with it. Okay, let's try it. All right, buddy. Yeah, there it is. When I start trimming it, the pus comes out. There was an abscess in the hoof, and that hurts. Right there. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Yep, that's good. We open it up, let the pus come out, and bandage it. This doesn't hurt, brother. Topical antibiotics and a bandage wrap should get Sven back pulling Santa's sleigh in no time. OK, let that come off by itself. Sven is going to be fine. Sven will be walking much better by tomorrow and a little better each day. OK. That was Thank it. you. Fast and easy. We'll see ya. We don't like him see him limping around. Hopefully, he'll be good from now on. Have a good season. Merry Christmas. You too. Same to you. Days at the clinic can run long. Today is about to get longer. Carrie has just arrived with an emergency case. Right, I found stuff I found on the side of the road. I called um, 
I found a puppy alongside of the road on my way home from grocery shopping. And he puked up, but I'm assuming he ate some kind of dead animal. Let's have a look. Come on. We'll see what we can do. So. Yeah, he's a puppy. You're right. Yeah. These are all baby teeth. He's about three months old. Is he? Yeah. When I took it home, he wouldn't drink or eat, not acting like a puppy. And so it scared me a little bit. He's a baby, and he's like <sighs> drooling and foaming. I'm hoping that he's OK. I mean, I don't really know too much about him, but I already care. Look at this. He's just shaking. What the heck? He's all matted, yeah. He wouldn't drink or eat anything. No. Terry found this puppy along the road in the ditch. I don't understand. I don't get it either. Most people would keep on driving, not carry. I, I went and I knocked on almost every door that had a vehicle in their driveway, and nobody said they belonged to him. I tried to find his owner, couldn't find his owner. It's infuriating. Like, it's it's hard to explain the anger, honestly. Travis, how can he look like this already? Mm -hmm. This poor guy. It looks like this puppy has been foraging on its own for some time. Temperature is normal, thank goodness. There's a lot of long hair. The button is matted. <sighs> Hang on. There's a lot of stool kicked around uh, his butt, so that gets shaved off. It's OK. And it's raw because it's got stuck there. I want to take a little bit of stool out of it. I'm going to check this for worms go from there. I love animals, so it, it would mean a lot, actually, if I could just get them to have an actual life. Ah, Sant. He ate anything and everything under the sun. What, how long has he been outside like that? I have no idea. It's like, the Lord only knows what could have happened if he stayed out there. That's a worm. He ate garbage along the road. There's sand in there. The sand in there? A whole there? bunch of sand. Uh. He's been eating whatever is on the ground, including the sand that sticks to it. Temp here and hot and everything sounds good. His belly is full, but I think he's full of worms. Gosh, poor little thing. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is just vaccinate it and have it worm. God. Sorry, I, I get upset. I can't believe that somebody just drops a puppy off someplace like this. I can't imagine letting. No, I can't either. A little, a little animal thing like just, that. Right. In this kind of weather. Yeah. It's not fair on the animal and especially not on puppies to just kick them out and fend for themselves. They can't. Oh. Come on, sweetheart. Say ah. Uh... After deworming and vaccinating the pup. Yeah, that's better. <sighs> it's gonna be a sweetheart. Besides a little love, the only thing this pup needs... Go ahead, you may eat it. ...is healthy food. Go eat. You don't want this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Now it's cold. That's the problem. So Kerry's taking it home, and you know, we'll start feeding some rice and hamburger first to settle the stomach, and then switch over to dog food. I hope that we can get it to eat anything like this, something. OK. Call me tomorrow food? morning if you ate. I will. I'll be here at 8.30. OK. If we can get him to eat, it's going to go from there. I'll give you guys a call in the morning. All right. Thank you. All I want is for him to have a good, healthy life. It's, it's what everybody deserves, animal or human. Come on, baby, baby. From pups to pits, the clinic is hopping with canine clients. Easy. Yeah, OK. She might not be little, but she is someone's baby. Her name's Baby, and she's a pit bull. She is really active dog, needs a lot of exercise, and she's always chasing things around. Baby's always on the move, but she can't outrun a new health problem. She uh, just had some trouble with her ear today. So what's going on with her? Her ear, right oh, here. Yeah. It's been like that for yeah, a, yeah. at least a week. It's that little swollen, isn't it? 
When I look at Baby, she has swelling in her ear, and it's somewhat warm and squishy. I think she has some blood clots in there. She has a hematoma, or blood clots, on the inside of her ear flap. Oh, that's clean. I don't see any signs of an ear infection in her ears, and there's no itching. Has she had any ear issues in the past? No. 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 Okay. okay. But she's all the time, you know, real active, digging around and stuff. Yeah. So the only other reason that I would think she would get blood clots in her ears is from hitting it on something or playing too rough. So what we'll have to do is basically sedate her, cut it open, get all the clots and blood out of there, and then sew it back up. I need to make an incision on baby's pinna or her ear flap. Good girl. It's okay. It's okay. You're fine. And basically sew it back together with a little bit of an opening. That way that ear drains, all the blood clots are gone, and it will heal down naturally. Baby, your name says it all. You know, she's, she's my uncle's baby, pretty much. Without her, you know, he'd be pretty lonely, I think. Let's go. Let's go home. Yay! Baby will have sutures in for about two weeks. Baby. 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 Come here, baby. Yeah. She shouldn't have any issues. It's a relief, you know. Baby's pretty resilient. Is that going to drain a lot? Yeah. OK. So keep her where it's going to be clean. And get her home and back to normal, and hopefully it don't happen again anytime soon. <laughs> Good morning, this is Hillary. How may I help you? Hey, Doc. Carrie's on the phone. Carrie found an abandoned pup left out in the cold. His belly is full, but I think he's full of worms. The three-month-old dog wouldn't eat. This is Dr. Paul. Yep, how's she doing? Carrie called this morning. I asked her for an update. Has he had a bowel movement? Well, in a way, that's good. Make sure that he has a bowel movement, and then we'll go from there. Puppy's doing a lot better. He's eating, and now we have to wait for a good bowel movement, and he should be fine. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Puppy's doing good. While Carrie's new puppy is making progress, over at Rooftop Landing, Sven has hit a roadblock. Dr. Pohl was out here about a week ago to visit Sven. Kind of an ingrown toenail turned into an abscess. <clears throat> And uh, unfortunately, he's still limping around pretty good. Sven is a big part of the farm. We definitely want to get him back on the stoves. What are we doing? Still, still limping? Yeah. Let's have better. a look. Let's see how bad. I have thought we had the pus draining nicely. Sven's hoof abscess hasn't healed. <laughs> He likes to be up and entertaining the crowds, but he can't really do that when he's got a hurt foot like this. Did the bandage come off too soon or what? Yeah, it came off pretty quick. It came off that night. Oh, you're kidding. How did he do that? Uh, talent. <laughs> I guess so. I think the wrap went off too fast. And with all the mud, we don't have frozen ground yet here. My guess is it's infected again. I think there's still pus in there. Again, to see the still hurts. Okay, let's give him a little bit of tranquilizer right now so we can work on him better. It has not healed enough yet, so it was still sore. So I'm going back and open it up again. What is that creaking? They all do it. The tendon. Tendons? Yeah. It's actually a tendon in their foot. They all have it. It's for when they get lost or when a mother has a calf and they get behind in the herd. They can, you can hear it for miles yeah. and they're all herded up. Yeah, especially when it's quiet. So that one can uh, know, knows which direction to go to catch back up to the herd. And that's from that song, you know, up on the rooftop, click, click, click. That's what they're talking about. Oh, gosh. They never told us that when we were a kid. <laughs> they didn't know, that's No, why. I didn't. They didn't know. No, I didn't. I knew that these reindeer sometimes click in their feet. And uh, I never knew that the song came from there. You're never too old to learn something new. OK. Now, when you cut a hole in the bottom of the hoof, 
you gotta make sure that it's opened up enough. It's all blood. Look, take a look. See that? And when you get clean blood, that means you're deep enough. I'm just bandaging it again, and we're gonna put a better bandage on. Now I use copper sulfate, and that'll just kill the abscess and make the hoof grow faster. Now you're laying down? Yeah, but that's okay. We'll get there. And of course, after that, everything is fine. If you take that out of day, you got more. <laughs> Already. Let's see what that does. Cool guy. Hopefully, this wrap stays on a little bit longer. Okay, we'll see ya. And within a couple days, uh, he'll be back up and going, and he'll be out eating all the feed from everybody. Thanks. Yep, we'll see ya. Hello, how are you? Good. I'm Dr. Arcee. I'll take a look at Luna. Is it Luna Sage or? Yes. Okay. Her name is Luna Sage. Hi, fancy girl. It's kind of witchy. What has she been doing? Um, her left oh, eye is just kind of cruddy. This witchy guinea pig may need a magic potion. She has some, like, crud around her eye. It's just, like, missing hair. How long has it been like that? Um, I just noticed it yesterday. OK. I just didn't want it to get bad. Is she scratching at it or Not really? Or anything. I'm going to take a listen to her and check her out. Hi, baby. Her eye itself looks OK, but around the eye, it doesn't look good. Oh, it does look awfully crusty, huh, girly? You hold her. I'm going to get a little bit of tape and look at that under the microscope. Mm -hmm. I want to get a good sample of Luna's crusty eye. I'm just going to go ahead and place this underneath her little eye. Packing tape is a simple way to go ahead and get a sample. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> OK, I'm going to go take a look at this. I'll be right back. Okay. Pretty normal. OK, so very good news. Everything looks normal. I don't find any abnormal microorganisms. I don't find any kind of parasites. The eye itself looks OK. So I'm wondering if she got something in there and just kind of like wiped her face yeah. to try to get it out. It's just some flaky skin. We just need to use some antimicrobials. It should start healing over okay. with this, OK? Perfect. Hopefully, that will allow us to get those crusts off of there and rehydrate her eye and her skin. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're done with that. <laughs> Luna Sage should be back to normal in a few days. Oh, so traumatic for her today. I know. Poor girl. Hey, baby. Oh. I will oh. hold the ladder. I'll hold the ladder. I'll you hold climb. the ladder. You climb up. Tis the season to be jolly. Ah, uh, yeah. I can see why I have to hold the step ladder. It's a rickety one. All right. I'll get the lights. Unless you're tasked with hanging Christmas lights. Dang it! It's a chore to put them up. <sighs> Where the heck is the outlet? I thought there was an outlet here. My dad used to hang up Christmas lights every year, and I think the one thing that he looked forward to about having his kids grown up was not having to hang Christmas lights. Charles! Your fingers got cold. And then you have to think about it, that you have to take them down in a month from now. I'm trying to get on the other side so I don't wrap I you in Christmas lights. So this is going to be quite the challenge. You know, mom's going to get mad at us if we don't do this. No, how come it didn't work? Did it just die? No. Just to note, the first thing you should do when hanging up Christmas lights is to check to make sure the strand is working. So what in the world is wrong with these lights? We you buy some cheap lights, Joe? And that was the step that we skipped. Oh, we got light. All right, so we use these ones. How does this go? I don't know. These gutter clips are designed to be like really easy about hanging lights. Hey. But we'll put easy in parentheses. But wait, there's one, two, three. So I need one, two, three. Or our dangle ain't going to be right. Oh, shoot. I put it on backwards. No, you can turn it around. 
No, you can't. It doesn't look right if you try to do that. And there's some debate about where the clip goes and how the clip clips on. You gotta come this way, Father. No, it's on backwards. It's gotta go this way. Yeah, like that. Every three. Oh, come on. Put it on that, Charles. I gotta get it right. Nobody sees the clips. No, but they'll see the dangle. You're lucky that I don't get out a measuring tape. I got it on right. But we got it. <sighs> now we're getting the rhythm. One, two. You're doing fine, Charles. I'll let you finish. <laughs> uh, thank you. My dad got me started. We're about a sixth of the way done. And then he bailed. How you doing, Charles? Yeah. Hurry up, man. Christmas is coming soon. You guys go out by the flag, and I'll plug them in. Don't get electrocuted. I won't get electrocuted. It's freezing. All right? Yes! One, two, two three! Yay! Yay! Happy oh New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah. And to all a good night. Did you feel better? Junior, my cat. He's only a year old. He's my baby. I'm kind of nervous. He's been doing it since yesterday. He's having a hard time breathing, and he's just been kind of really relaxed. Just usually a really, really energetic cat. So kind of nerve wracking. So definitely worrisome and anxious. How's Junior? Oh, struggling to breathe a little bit. Yeah, so I hear. Looks like he's breathing pretty hard. Looking at Junior right away, I can tell he has some increased respiratory effort. Any coughing or sneezing or Not just the, the labored breathing? Oh, yep, just the labored breathing. Listening to his lungs, there's some crackles and it's kind of muffled sounding. It just doesn't sound normal. Have you seen him like breathing with his mouth open at all? Yes. Or? He is having to breathe through his mouth, which cats will only do if they're in respiratory distress. His temperature is normal. So I want to take an x-ray and see if that helps explain what's going on. I'll be back. He was only four weeks old when we got him. He was probably the friendliest one there. So I can't imagine having to make any rash decisions for him. but. We'll just do what we can. OK. And he's got lots of fluid. This amount of fluid in the chest is a pretty dire situation. That's what I was worried about. He has quite a bit of fluid in his chest. This up here is what a normal lung looks like. Mm -hmm. And it should be filling this entire thing. There's fluid filling up the, the lung space that should be taken up with oxygen. But all this like white stuff is some sort of fluid that's in his chest, which is making it difficult for him to breathe. Okay. Junior is only able to breathe with probably like an eighth or so of his lung. Now is this life threatening? <sighs> it it's pretty serious. They're all to this point where most of the chest is filled with fluid. That's not a good sign. So it could be infection, or it could be cancer. So unfortunately, this is a, a pretty grave guarded prognosis for Junior. I can try and collect a little bit of the fluid from his chest, and that's going to make him feel a lot better right away. But I just want to be pretty clear that when I've seen this before and I've tried those things, they've improved for a few weeks, but ultimately it hasn't been a good outcome. Okay. okay. I appreciate the yeah. honesty. Junior's condition is pretty severe, but there's certainly some stuff that we can do here to make Junior more comfortable. I just want to do what we can. And if what we're doing isn't working, then uh, we'll make a different decision down the road. We'll wrap him up in his cozy blanket. Naviola. I'm heartbroken. 
He's just a baby, so it's not really fair. Sorry, this is a huge area, bud. I'm gonna try and kind of use the ultrasound to guide my needle poke so I avoid hitting his lung or any of those big structures. That's his heart. That's the thing we want to avoid. After finding the right spot, Dr. Lisa gently uses suction to remove the liquid. So I took off about 100 milliliters of some, like, reddish fluid. I'll have you come back in, like, five to seven days or so. We're going to keep draining the fluid as often as we need to and also put him on some antibiotics and then some anti-inflammatory, so make sure that Junior is comfortable. Hey, are you signing? I already noticed that he's feeling a little bit better. So See you next week. Yes, ma'am. As hard as it is, I'll do what I can to make him as comfortable as possible for the time that we have with him. I know. While Junior goes home to rest. It's a okay. It's a dog. He's not going to get you. Marvin has just arrived after a rough night. He uh, started all of a sudden his head twitching and his eyes going back and forth. And then he started throwing up. It scared me. I was very worried because I've never had a cat sick like that before. It almost looked like vertigo because his head was wobbling. I had vertigo in April, so I don't know if a cat can get <laughs> vertigo <laughs> from a person. I don't know. Hello. Hello. He oh, freaked yeah. me right out. Yeah. Come on, get out. Marvin is a little guy. We call him Starvin' Marvin in the beginning. He is 12 pounds. Oh, he is 12 pounds. I thought 10. Hey, look at me. <laughs> I know that smells good. There's more animals on it. <laughs> did he eat this morning? He was eating. His physical is completely normal. What did you get into? You don't have any red poison or any around, no. do you? Oh, no. Nope. But he feels good and Does everything. He? Yeah. OK. Cats, they get into the garbage. They'll eat things that they shouldn't. It doesn't make any difference. Dog owners, cat owners, animal owners, make sure they don't get into the garbage. Temperature, heart, lungs, eyes okay. look good. So. He got into something that made him sick and throw up. And that is all better. OK. It looked like Marvin has already gotten rid of all the stuff that bothered him, so let him go home and see what happens. Shoot, I did have some shrimp tails. Maybe he got there shrimp tails go. and threw up. Well, he liked shrimp. I'm going to have to take care of the garbage and not have it at the side of the sink all night long. It is icier than icy. It's not going to be available for him to get into. Ooh, sugar pops. Chaotic. The holidays at Pole Vet are just as busy as ever. We can put you in a room, but you will be in there for a while. And for two vets. Give us just half a second while the ladies will help you. The rush doesn't seem to have an end in sight. Off to a farm call, Dr. Brenda rushes out the door. Wish me luck. Good luck. Dr. Lisa holds down the fort. Big guy. Is this Fred? It is. Oh, sweet boy. Got a pretty large patient to go visit today. Fred is here with his owner. He's a bull massive and red retriever mixture. Very laid back, quite calm. But uh, if he gets on a mission, then that's, that's where he's going. Today's mission. Hey, bud. Is a fact-finding one. So what's going on? Well, he's got a little bump right here. He seems to have a bump on his leg. I had him in another place, and they weren't liking what they saw. And they didn't know what it was, and they thought they seen something they were worried about. You can never tell just by looking at a lump on the surface if it's one we don't need to worry about or if it is a more aggressive type of cancer. Huh. Hey, handsome. When did you first notice it? Uh, it's been about three weeks now. Dogs are prone to developing little lumps and bumps as they age. Has it changed in size at all? Oh, I think it may have just a little bit. A lot of these masses are benign. I'm going to get a little sample out of it. 
I will let you know what we find. Hello? Hello. Which one of the cows are we looking at? That one right there with the brown patch. OK. Oh, I had heifers have babies on me, but they just had problems. I said, I got to have the vet out. She still got placenta hanging out of her? Yes. She just hasn't cleaned yet, which means she hasn't gotten rid of her placenta. So we're here to take care of that problem. All right, you go by. Treating an animal is sometimes the easy part. That's not her, is it? No, she's right over there. The hard part is catching them. Not that one. No. No, no. All right. So mostly all I was seeing on the slide was like a few fat cells and skin cells. So I think that this lump is just a benign little lipoma or a fatty mass. All we really need to do with these is monitor them. Good, good. That makes me happy. Good. Just keep a close eye on it. Good, good. A little relieved for sure. He's a sweet boy. Have a great day, guys. I guess now we'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens from there. We're trying to get this heifer in the chute. She decides that the opening in the front of the barn looks a whole lot more attractive than all of us crazy people trying to get her into the chute. So she bails out the front of the barn. Let's just close this, go out and around. I thought, wow, she's gonna be gone in that cornfield. We'll never see her again except her tail in the air and going as fast as she can go. Get the dog out of the way. But for whatever reason, she just stood out there waiting for us. So thankfully, we were able to get her to run back in the barn. Hook, hook chain that. Oh. Somebody run the front. Don't even, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Perfect. Well, that was interesting. Easy, boss. I reached in. You're all right. Took a hold of the placenta and with some gentle traction pulled it out. All right. We're going to put some antibiotics in her uterus and give her a shot. We'll give her some prostaglandin, which is a hormone. Injectable prostaglandin naturally produced by the uterus should help shrink the organ down to its pre-pregnancy size. And I'm going to leave you a dose to give her in two weeks. And that hopefully will help get her uterus to close down, cycle again. We're just trying to make her cycle so she comes into heat, you know, cervix opens up, empty out whatever crud's in there so that it's healthier and get it to heal. Long term, she's going to be fine. OK, any other questions? No, no, I appreciate you coming out. Not there. a problem, nope. I was so happy. I'm gonna go. You guys have a good day. You too. Thank you. Oh gosh. Can't can't be more excited because now they're all gonna be better. I guarantee it. I've never had Dr. Brenda come out and not make them better. Come on, I know it's cold. Yeah, I know. Which one is it? It's going to get colder. Toddy is a 60-year-old gelding. Well, bring him out. These are standard bred race horses. They raced last Saturday night down in Detroit. These are not with a jockey on top. The standard breds with the jockey in the carriage behind. Toddy may be quick on his feet, but a potential dental issue is tripping him up. Had some, some teeth issues but he he's hurts. been real funny about opening his mouth. The driver at the track was having trouble controlling him with a bit. He wasn't steering just right. He eats all right, doesn't he? He eats all right. His teeth are fine. Everything feels good, but he's painful. Welcome. OK. How did he race? Good or not? Yeah, he won. He won? Yeah. Fantastic. That's muscle soreness in there. He does not walk easily, kind of stiff. I was going to give him a shot of selenium. I feel the muscles, and I can feel the difference with horses that lack selenium. Selenium, a mineral, is vital for muscle function in horses. You can't do that. A supplemental dose should help. We had a terrible time at the track oh. getting blood out of them. Oh, my gosh. If Toddy will let the needle near him. Cover his eye. Oh, look at this. He sees a needle. Like some people are afraid of needles, this horse doesn't like it either. It took three to get the blood out of him. 
We had to twitch him. Of course, they're racehorses. They're high strong, so a twitch on them. OK, cover his eye, because the limb goes in his butt. When they don't see it, the needle goes in without a problem. He gets a shot of selenium with vitamin E and an anti-inflammatory. And usually, they're better in about a week. And he's done. Take it off. OK. Doc believes that it's a muscle issue. And I think he's right. This is Chris. How can I help you? Yeah, she's a smart lady. So we'll send her out and see what we can do for you. A 4-H calf is down and in distress. Yep, see you later. Bye-bye. OK, Mike Newman and Nicole is on call. They bought a 4-H calf. It's not doing good. This is an emergency. Hopefully, we can get there as soon as possible. What's he been doing? Off feed this morning. OK. Kind of acts humped up, like he's got a tummy ache. OK. He just wasn't acting right. He had his nose in the ground. He didn't want to eat this morning. Just stood back there and watched. Uh, we decided maybe we better call you guys. Yeah. The calf is a show calf, so they're very concerned because I have a show coming up this weekend. Is he coughing at all? No. OK, no he has a whole bunch of nasal discharge. The children's 4-H uh, projects are ill. Well, we need to get to the bottom of it as quick as possible, even more important than my own calf. Let me see, bud. The calf is just laying on the ground and a whole bunch of snot, just yellow green snot rushing out of his nose. His lungs don't sound too good. I hear a whole bunch of crackles. 105.3. That's pretty high. That's really high. That's why he doesn't feel good at all. Jeez, he has a temperature of 105 in the winter, which is very, very high. A normal cow temperature should be around 100. OK, can you see if you can stand him up for me? Come on, bud. Good boy. So I'm gonna make sure he didn't have any bloat going on or anything else. But that looks good. This calf has a case of pneumonia. He has crackles on both sides of his lungs. He has a whole bunch of nasal discharge. His temperature is through the roof. When he stands, he has his neck stretched out to the ground, just trying to breathe better. I'm gonna give him, get him on some antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories for him. Let's see if we can knock it out of his system. I want to start this calf on pretty strong antibiotics and anti-inflammatories tonight. OK, you got him? I'm going to give him a poke. And then we're going to redose him in a few days. So that'll make him feel better and will help with his respiratory. If I didn't come out tonight, he probably would have gone downhill overnight. And so hopefully, even by tomorrow afternoon, he'll look a little bit perkier. What's your thoughts taking these calves to Michigan State and showing them starting on Friday morning? On Friday morning? Three days. If the other ones start showing signs, then probably no. If he has improved and is looking better by Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, then he should be OK. OK, well, you heard it from the boss. OK. Well, good news is that no one else is really sick yet. Luckily, all the other calves are OK for now, but it's really going to depend on the next couple days. We just got to let the antibiotics do their job now. OK, I'll see you guys later. OK, thank you. Good luck, Miles. Come on, get in there. A persistent abscess kept Sven from joining Santa's sleigh team. I think there's still puss in there. Today, Sven's ready for his next rooftop landing. Just in the last week, it's been a total difference. He showed much improvement. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Danny's called to have me look at Sven just to double check his foot. Thanks, babe. I know, I know. And when I looked at the bottom of his foot, kind of pressed around. Everything feels good now. It's all healing well. Everything looks good here. OK, there you go. All right, he goes back. She's good, I'm good, and we're going to let him go. All right, well, let me know how he's doing. Will do. One minute to go. Wakeman, Michigan might not be the North Pole, 
but they've got a bowl of their own to help celebrate the season. Have you been in a parade like this before? You like it? All these lights? We have the Christmas parade in Waitman. Yeah, you do. Diane and I are going to be the Grand Marshal and Marshalers, so we are just sitting on top of Florida in a little bit of snow here. Oh, look at that. It's starting to feel a little bit like Christmas. Oh my gosh, look at all the people. Wave at them. Hello. Hello. Merry Christmas. Like the horse. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> this is the first parade that Abigail and Silas will be involved with. <laughs> yeah, the dog's Hi, waving his tail at us. Yeah. It's really cool experience for them. Oh, they got a fire going. Oh. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! It's always nice, and I'm glad that little town like this makes a big deal about it. Hello! Merry Christmas, everybody!